Hi, I'm Sondeb Majumdar from Intel Labs, and I'll be presenting our work on optimizing memory placement using evolutionary graph reinforcement learning. So we're trying to accelerate the speed of deep learning inference on a hardware accelerator. And some common approaches to this kind of compute uh, optimization include compression, pruning, quantization, all of which uh, result in some kind of a change in topology or the parameter values of the arithmetic resolution. And they also usually cannot scale beyond a certain point without sacrificing some kind of a functional performance. We take a complementary approach where we optimally map uh, each tensor to memory uh, to the memory components that are available on hardware. In doing so, we train a reinforcement learning agent to learn the trade-off between memory capacity and bandwidth. And we also completely train, validate, and test the entire algorithm on hardware. So for each workload, we need to map uh, each layer to memory, right? So for each layer, we need to make two decisions, where to map its weights and activations, and then for each decision, we have a choice of three components. And as you can see, for each of the components, there's an obvious trade-off between how big it is and how fast it is. And as you can see at the bottom, the combinatorics of the solution space grows exponentially as the complexity of the underlying network grows. So in terms of our approach, we first convert the workload, which is a bunch of feed-forward uh, layers, for example, uh, convolution layers to, node, uh, to the different uh, nodes of the graph. So each node of the graph uh, representation has some parameters of the corresponding layer. And then this graph representation goes into our reinforcement learning agent, which we uh, construct as a graph neural network. And the output of the graph neural network is another graph, exactly the same topology as the input graph. The only difference is the features, the node features of this output graph now uh, have the actual mapping of the corresponding uh, layers. In terms of our training algorithm, we use a combination of policy gradient learning. As you can see, there's actor predict network on the left side. And we also use an evolution search uh, to get more stable and, long, and, um, and deal with the sparse uh, reward problem that we have inherently. And so what makes these two blocks really work are these two components. Uh, so on the top, you see that any GNN policy can actually migrate into the evolutionary population and participate in evolution. And on the reverse side, any evolutionary um, uh, policy, while it's rolling out in the environment, can contribute data into the shared replay buffer. And the policy gradient learner can sample from the shared replay buffer in order to update its rate. We tested on three workloads, ResNet50, ResNet101, and BERT. And we tested for our method, which is EGRL, uh, also a pure policy gradient method that's uh, motivated by a lot of recent work in this, uh, in this sort of optimization in recent times a pure evolutionary algorithm, and also a classic dynamic programming baseline. We report the speed up on the y-axis, and what this is is a normalized speed, uh, where we look at the end-to-end -end, uh, speed of each of these algorithms, and we normalize it with uh, the end-to-end -end speed achieved by the baseline compiler, uh, which comes with the hardware, and that usually involves some kind of a heuristic logic. And as you can see, uh, EGRL outperforms um, all of the baselines, uh, EA, which is the blue line, uh, comes pretty close, and we attribute this gap in performance where we uh, outperform EA to the fact that we combine policy gradients with EA. We also looked at zero-shot transferability uh, of our method, and what we do here is we train on a, net, on a particular workload. So, for example, here we train on BERT, and at different points in training on BERT, we zero-shot transfer it to test on a different workload. So, for example, there's NASA PR101. So what's really surprising is at different points in training, we do find that these three out of these four instances that right out of the box without having seen the second workload, it can actually achieve a speed up greater than one, which implies that it's outperforming the baseline compiler uh, out of the box. Uh, so uh, obviously this is not as performant as trading from scratch on the second workload, but it does give us a useful bootstrapping point for uh, further fine tuning. So in conclusion, uh, our method, EGRL, combines evolutionary search and policy gradient learning to map neural network tensors to onboard memory components. We successfully learned how to trade off memory capacity and memory bandwidth in order to maximize the end-to-end -end, uh, inference speed. The core components that make up our method, uh, evolutionary algorithms and PG, are both critical, as we saw in the ablation study. Uh, we didn't show this in, the, in this slides, but we actually saw that uh, EGRL's learned mapping uh, display clear correlations based on the performance achieved. So, for example, if you look at the actual memory placements from EGRL at a point where its performance is competitive with, uh, for example, the compilers, the actual compiler's mapping is within the cluster of mappings provided by EGRL at that point in its performance.
And if you look at the embeddings at ETRL's peak performance uh, for different random initializations, they also are uh, they do also form uh, separable clusters. And finally, we also find that these learned embeddings appear to generalize pretty well to unseen workloads, and this could be a potential bootstrapping point for further fine tuning. I'd be happy to take questions at this point.